Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. <laughs> David, you nearly dressed yet? I will be in two shapes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> you look lovely dressed in a lamb's tail. <laughs> now, before I go in to shave, you'd uh, better tell me what it is you want me to do. How'd you know I wanted you to well, do it? I've uh, been your husband long enough. Then please pull the sofa away from the wall so I can mop up the floor behind it. What? What's the matter with mopping up behind the sofa? Uh, now, look, darling. Just because you're interviewing maids today, that doesn't mean that you have I to... I want mop... the apartment to look all spruced up for when they start coming. They? But then you won't look as if you needed a maid. Exactly. No maid these days is going to take a job with a person who, who doesn't look as if she can't keep her apartment clean herself. But that's what the maid's for, I thought. You just don't have any psychology at all. He said it's getting late. You mean it's getting early. Must be... All of quarter to eight. Quarter to eight already? Oh, I'll never get the apartment all cleaned up on time. What's on time? Eight o'clock. Oh. Didn't you read the ad in the paper? I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. You couldn't find the ad? No. You probably looked in the wrong place. It's a lovely ad. I'd take the job myself. <laughs> you may have to. <laughs> now, let me see. Oh, here it is. General houseworker to be a member of the family... Loves children, cats, and dogs. And the country. Call Norton, Plaza 5, 5597, or apply. Then I give our address. Well, how's that? Think we'll get a lot of answers? No. No? No. I understand it's still very difficult to get someone these days. With a child and a cat and a dog. Seems to me if I were a maid, I'd grab the job. Imagine living in a beautiful house designed by you. And taking care of a beautiful baby designed by you. And you. And living in the country. It sounds like a wonderful job. Well, you ought to know you've had it for a while. I don't ever want another job, darling. Don't you even want to raise? I don't even want shorter hours. I'm very satisfied with the position. Then I'm very satisfied with each and every service you have rendered. Would you like to prove it, darling? I would. Then move that sofa. Oh, I might have <laughs> known it. There's a price to pay for everything. David, what do you think she'll be like? Who? The maid. Oh, she'll probably be very big and very pale with large hands and flat feet. Flat feet? Mm. Will she be young or old? Oh, betwixt. That doesn't sound like our maid. Her name ought to be Bridget. Or maybe she's Swedish. A Swedish girl called Bridget. That sounds very interesting. <laughs> well, I'm all through sweeping behind the sofa. I'll uh, push it up against the wall. If you weren't so busy being an architect, I wouldn't need a maid. Mm. She's very considerate, isn't she? Who? Who have we been talking about? Our new maid, of course. Oh. She's waiting till 8 o'clock to call us up. Just like it said in the ad. That's not very encouraging. Why, isn't it? Well, it makes me think that maybe there aren't so many maids who are just dying to come and housework in the Norton Zoo. I'll bet you 20 cents. Spin thrift. <laughs> David, do you think that's one? It's not 8 o'clock. Well, that shows how much she wants the job. She couldn't wait. I'd uh, better get out of here and get dressed. Hey, how does the room look? How do I look? Just like the new maid. Oh, I can't wait to see what she'll be like. Then answer the door before she changes her mind and goes away. David. Never interviewed one before. What's it like? <laughs> She'll probably interview you, so relax. I'm relaxed. Then you'd better answer the door and find out what kind of a maid our maid is. I, I'm going in the bedroom and peek through the keyhole. Oh, I wish you were interviewing and I was peeking. David, what'll I say? Just roll out the red carpet and shout, Welcome. She sounds as if she really wants the job. So here I go. Keep your fingers crossed. Hey, darling, uh, take off that apron. Doesn't matter. She'll understand. Hello. I'm Mrs. Norton. And I'm Mrs. Brooks. I'm very glad to meet you. Won't you come in? Well, I don't mind if I do. But uh, is it all right if I interview you here? Interview me? 
Why, no. No, that's fine. We'll go in the living room. Well, there's no one home. Only my husband. He's dressing. Oh. Oh, you're a couple. Yes, we're married. Hmm. I, I hope you don't mind I'm not dressed. I was just dusting up. Oh, that's perfectly all right. You uh, get started early, don't you? So do you. So do... Well, this is rather an occasion. An ad like yours just doesn't come every day. Oh, you like the ad? I'm so glad. And, of course, I'm delighted that you like to get started early in the mornings, too, because my husband and I are very early risers. Yes, that's quite unusual these days. Is it? Well, as long as you like to get up early and we like to get up early, it, it doesn't matter about anybody else, does it? <laughs> yes. Well, this room's very nice and clean. Oh, I just did it very hurriedly. We thorough clean on Wednesdays. Thorough clean? That sounds very encouraging. I just can't stand a place that's dusty. Oh, Can you? you really are an exceptional person, Mrs. Norton. But I, I can't abide with dust either. Well, then we'll get along beautifully. Do you like children? Oh, I'm extremely fond of them. But I haven't got any of my own. Oh, I am sorry. Well, my husband will probably want to see you. And uh, I, of course, will want to see him. Of course. Well, now, what have we got left to discuss? I'd like to know a little about your experience. My, uh... Oh, <laughs> well, I, I haven't had very much, but... It's the spirit that counts. That's what I always say. Besides, my husband and I like simple foods. Oh, yes, of course, and so do I. And, uh, salary? You mean wages? Yes, of course, wages. I think we can let that ride for the time being. Uh, let's wait and see how it works out. Well, that's a perfect idea. Well, I'm certainly glad I didn't wait until 8 o'clock to call you. You'll probably be besieged. Oh, it's so difficult to find the right person these days. And your ad was so appealing. Well, if you don't mind, I'll go in and see if my husband is ready. Would you be ready to start right away? Immediately. I'll get my husband. I'll, I'll be right back. Well, darling, uh, how is she? David, she sounds wonderful. She does? And you were certainly right. She's interviewing me. Mm-hmm. I forgot to ask her whether she likes cats and dogs, well, too. she must have, or she wouldn't have answered the ad. That's true. And she loved the ad. Say, you know, she doesn't look like a maid at all. No? no? What does she look like? Well, she's about 40, and like you said, beautifully dressed. Well, wages are high these days. Well, don't, don't you want to come in and see her? Well, let's see. Wait till I uh, put on my tie and coat. Yes, I, I want to make an impression. I told her all about you. She seemed very pleased about you, too. Well, you'd better go back in there before she changes her mind about taking the job. Oh, darling, I can hardly believe it. Just think we have a new maid and a wonderful one. And on the first try. Kiss the Blarney Stone and skadoodle. Goodbye, Blarney Stone. Mrs. Brooks, my husband will be right out. Well, oh, there's really no need. I'm sure he'll be fine, and I'm completely satisfied with you. Your attitude is what pleases me most. My attitude? Well, if you don't mind, Mrs. Brooks, I'd, I'd like to say the same thing for you. Well, that's nice of you. Of course, you're very young and somewhat inexperienced, but uh, we'll manage. Oh, I do hope so. Mrs. Brooks, mm -hmm. I, I hope you won't think I'm impertinent, but... You see, my husband and I sort of like to, to know a little more about the people oh, who... yes, and so do I. But you know, somehow from the very first moment I met you, I, I've been thinking... <laughs> how shall I put it? But I, I've been thinking that, uh, well, you're not exactly the type one finds doing housework. Oh, I don't mind. I was just doing a little dusting around before you came. Well, now it's all settled? yes. And I know I'll be very pleased with you and your husband. Oh, da David, this is Mrs. Brooks. Well, glad to meet you, Mrs. Brooks. Good morning, Mr. Norton. My wife tells me she's very pleased with what you told her. Hmm, that's nice. And I'm very pleased with what I've seen of your wife. Uh, oh, by the way, I was just wondering, uh, have you any references? References? Uh, what did you say, Mrs. Brooks? Oh, of course, references aren't important. I, I still say it's the spirit. Now, isn't that nice, David? Well, now, here's, here's my card. Oh, thank you. And I won't take up any more of your time, and... Well, until Saturday. Goodbye.
Goodbye. Yes, uh, Goodbye. Until Saturday, then. And and thank you for coming. <laughs> well, of course, I'm not really accustomed to going out for interviewing, but, oh, well, you know how things are these days. One does so many things differently. <laughs> <laughs> David, isn't she wonderful? I'm not sure. It sounded to me as if she were interviewing us. That's what you said would happen. I know, but, well, not so seriously. David, don't look a gift made in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Just thank your lucky stars. Oh, it's eight o'clock. There's another one. David, just tell her the position is taken. Hello. Yes, this is it. Have we gotten a job yet? What was that you said? Have we found... Well, I think you've made a mistake. I, I think you have the wrong number. Darling, darling, get that newspaper. David, what's the matter? Look, here, wait, here, here it is. Uh, uh, I thought so. What? Our ad's in the wrong column. It's in the jobs wanted column, not in the help wanted column. That means that... Mm, Mrs. Brooks was interviewing us. She thought we wanted the job. David, oh, no. Then we haven't got a maid after all. And she seems so perfect. And Mrs. Brooks hasn't got a couple after all either. And we seem so perfect. <laughs> we'll have to call her. You better answer that. And you'd better answer that. We'd better not answer either. We're a, a couple of false pretenses. They'll be ringing all day long. And so many more people want maids than there are maids that want people. Oh, uh, wait a minute, darling. If a good enough job comes along, maybe we ought to take it. Maybe you better answer that phone. Oh, and when you're through with the telephone, darling, will you please answer the door? Suppose the bell rang right this minute and unexpected guests popped in. Would you be in a position to greet them as hospitably as you'd like? If there's a case of Coca-Cola in the house, you've no need to worry. Whether the young people bring their friends home or your own companions drop over for an hour or an evening... If there's plenty of Coke on ice, everyone can enjoy the pause that refreshes. You know, Mr. King, I was completely taken in by Mrs. Norton. And she was by you, Mrs. Brooks. But uh, I, I don't envy her. Her phones are going to be ringing like mad all day long. Well, Claudia won't mind too much. She just loves to answer the phone. Name me the woman who doesn't. And tomorrow she gets her big chance. Oh, indeed. How? Well, it seems that Mr. Carrington telephones from Chicago, and the papers David needs are locked in the safe. You know how safe combinations are, so Claudia and... Papers? What papers? What papers? Well, I wish I knew. But I suppose I'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> and I will, too. Goodbye, Mr. King. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Brooks. And I hope you find that maid you're looking for. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.